Welcome back to the garage. In today's video, it's finally time to reinstall that adapter plate behind the 12 valve Cummins and then hook the automatic transmission behind the engine. Now this is the engine and transmission that's going in my 1984 Dodge Crew Cab project truck. I didn't actually include any of the footage of me taking the transmission apart and putting the new gaskets in it, just for the simple fact that I thought it was going to take one day the job ended up taking three days because Rock Auto was kind enough to send me the wrong gasket for the front seal on the transmission, so luckily O'Reilly's had one in stock and got me out of a bind. I ended up getting the transmission all put back together and painted up nicely. I didn't include any of that footage just for the simple fact that there were so many cuts in that that I think that if I put it in the beginning of this video that the video would have been practically unwatchable, so I hope you understand my reasoning. So enough talk on this, it's time to dive into the project and get this a little bit further along. Now you can see I've got the engine adapter all painted up nicely, some jet black to match the engine. And I can't stress enough how good it is to label bags of bolts. This is the uh, transmission to the adapter plate bolts. This is the bolts for the adapter plate. And this is the flywheel bolts. Now I've parted out a couple of second gen trucks and uh, it's nice to have these bags labeled because these bolts look quite a bit alike. So enough talk on that. Let's get the adapter plate bolted to the back of that engine. Now I already thought ahead and put some anti-seize on these dowels that align this adapter plate to the back of the engine just in case in the near future I have to pull this back off and remove the transmission for any reason. So I got that all set. So now it's time to sit this thing on here. I have to get my dead bull hammer and tap that on. Best part about doing this today is the fact that it's about 90 degrees with the garage door open, so it's a hot one. The adapter's flush on both sides, so I'll go ahead and run these bolts in here now. Put some thread locker on them so they don't decide to back out with this engine rattling like they do. Alright, next step is to go ahead and throw this flex plate on here. Now, I'm using the factory stock one because I don't plan on turning this engine up at all. They do make billet aluminum ones for higher horsepower, but this one's going to be perfect for my application. So, I got some more Loctite, I'm going to put it on the bolts, throw this thing on here. Now as soon as I get the 1984 Dodge Crew Cab project a little bit further along and get the engine and transmission out of my garage and get the cab back on the frame, I can start working on this old truck. But I also wanted to throw in here, if you would please check out my buddies at Central Oregon Shenanigans in the Fox Shop. Their channel links will be in the video description below. They have a lot of great content on here. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe to them. Just do me a favor and drop down in the comment section and tell them Zane sent you. All right, here's the part of the build where I get to break out my least favorite tool to use. Now, why is it my least favorite tool to use? I looked up torque specs for this flex plate on a few different online websites. One website was claiming 100 foot-pounds. The other was claiming 55 foot-pounds. So there's always conflicting stories with that. You don't want to have these too loose and have them back out. And you also don't want to have them too tight because it can actually crack this flex plate. So I'm going to split the difference. I'm going to go with 75 foot-pounds right in the middle. And anytime you torque something, you never want to go 75 or whatever you're going to in the first stage. You always want to break it into two parts. So the first stage, I went 30 foot-pounds on these. The next one, I'm going to bump it up to 75, do my final torque. And you always want to do them kind of like you're doing a wheel in a star pattern. Thank you. 
Okay, so the transmission has all new gaskets in it. It's painted up nicely. The engine has a lot of new gaskets in it. It's painted up nicely. It's time to put these two back together and get them ready to stick back in the frame. Okay, so mating the engine back to the transmission took a little bit longer than expected. One of the reasons could be the fact that even with the garage door open, it's about 90 degrees inside of the garage, or the fact that I took off early this morning and helped a guy from work put down four yards of concrete for his garage floor, so I'm definitely whooped for today. But the list of things that need to be accomplished on that project is shrinking every day. The uh, project is probably as far as I can get it for right now. The engine and transmission can go back into the frame, but I don't want to do that until I can actually set the cab back on the frame just to kind of put the front clip back on this truck and keep the engine out of the weather. But thanks a lot for taking the time out of your day to watch my videos. It truly means a lot. I really appreciate all the nice comments as well. So thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment or a question down below. And just as a friendly reminder that it doesn't matter if you're working on your project in a garage or in your driveway. What matters is that you go out there, you do the job yourself, and you learn more about your project. Whatever that project may be. Now that this video is over, how about you go outside and work on something? My name is Zane, and I'll catch you next time.